Welcome to this special broadcast exploring DRM technology. I'm Scott Hollinger. We're here to share how KTWR is going to change the way you listen to shortwave radio. Our new transmitters use Digital Radio Mondial Technology, or DRM for short. DRM provides a strong, clear signal so you can enjoy the broadcast of KTWR. We've been delivered from the darkness of you and I have been delivered from another realm. Welcome to Air Jaren. This program is the production of Global Radio Ministries and Jaren Ministries International. This study series is the Book of Colossians. The series is the work of Dr. James C.C. For these past few weeks, Pastor C.C. has been teaching us about the march of the mature Christian. These distinguishing marks all are contained in the Apostle Paul's pastoral prayer in this passage in Colossians, chapter 1, and verses 9 through 14. Listen again to this remarkable passage. Colossians 1, verses 9 to 14. Marked for life. For this reason also, since the day we heard of it, we have not ceased to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, to please him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all power, according to his glorious might, for the attaining of all steadfastness and patience, joyously giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. For he rescued us from the domain of darkness, and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Last time Pastor Sisi was discussing the final distinguishing mark, a thankful life. The thankful life continuously expresses praise and thanksgiving for all that God has done for us. We therefore have reasons for rejoicing. The first reason, discussed last time is that we are joint heirs of God's inheritance. Affect our perspective on life, our attitude toward our fellow Christians, our behavior. And, it should affect the quality of our work. It is the Lord that we serve. And now, with reason two for rejoicing and the conclusion of the marks of the mature Christian, Pastor Jim Cece. Reason number two, we've been delivered from the darkness of sin you see it there in verse 13? For he rescued us from the domain of darkness. And what a statement. Uh, the Greek phrase is a verb and two nouns, uh, ruamai and exousia and scatus. And, and if you have a New American Standard, you see rescued from the domain of darkness. But if you have a New International, rescued us from the dominion of darkness. King James has delivered us from the power of darkness. And even the, uh, the uh, what is it, the contemporary Christ English version says rescued us from the dark power of Satan. But no matter how you translate it, don't miss the pathos of it. That you and I have been delivered from another realm. It's talking about what we used to be as opposed to what we are now. We have not just been rescued from false religion. We have not just been rescued from spiritual indifference. We have not just been rescued from a wayward life. We have been rescued, pulled out from a wide-sweeping exousia, an oppressive power of sin and death that controlled our lives as unbelievers. And I know that control of my life before I turn 21. I know it. I could describe it, and you would not want to hear the stories. They were as ugly as ugly can be. And I'm sure some of you could say amen in your own life. That sin had complete jurisdiction over my unbelieving life, but he pulled me out. He rescued me from me and from the domain of darkness that sealed me in darkness, blinded me to the light of God's character, cut me off from the gospel until God rescued me from that dark kingdom. And that's why, because of Christ's work on the cross, the insane of eternal sincerity, not just eternal security, I chose those words carefully. But with eternal sincerity, we can sing amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a stinky, foul-smelling wretch like me. 
in you. Oh, I was once lost. But now I'm found. I was blind. But now I see. You don't have to shout it. Reason number three is that we've been transformed to the kingdom of God's Son. <laughs> because of His beloved Son. Now, you know how much I love that word in verse 13. But don't miss this, that in the ancient world, when they conquered an empire, one empire and another, they would take a portion of the people and pull them to the new empire. All right, it's a very common practice. For example, in 721, 722 B.C., Assyria conquered the northern tribes, the ten tribes of Israel, remember, brought a portion of them and transformed them into their image. Don't miss this. Remember in 586 B.C., when the southern tribes of Judah and Benjamin, called often Judah, then Apple, this capital in Jerusalem, in 586 would come in, and the Babylonians would come in and take a portion of them to Babylon and try to make them into their own image. Don't miss the analogy. Paul's using that same imagery to say that and pulled a remnant out of that kingdom of darkness, right, and transferred in the kingdom, the realm, and the authority of his beloved son, uprooted us from that war-torn, corrupt homeland, the kingdom of this world, the kingdom of earth, reestablished us as citizens of a new country, the kingdom of heaven. And in Philippians, the third chapter, he will talk about that, that you and I are citizens of heaven. Philippians 3, verse 19 and 20. But there's something different. Because instead of treating us as second-class immigrants, or as a conquered people, God adopted us into the royal family. That's what John, or Jesus said in John 1.12. He said, for as many as received him, to them he gave the exousia. Same word Paul uses in Colossians. The authority, the power to become the children of God, even to those who believe in his name. Oh, because of grace and because of mercy and faith in Christ alone to the glory of God alone. We are children of God. We are the princes and princesses of a new realm with all the rights and privileges, and it is eternal. I was born and raised in Toronto, Canada until I was 11 years old. I was born in 1950. In 1953, the Queen was coronated, Queen Elizabeth II was coronated for the Canadian people, uh, and I eventually moved to an apartment building in the park where the Queen was coronated. In fact, at the age of nine, I was detained by the police. Okay, I was arrested by the police. I was put in jail for five minutes because my brothers and I where the queen was coronated. Apparently, that's not a legal thing to do. And so they put me in jail to say, look, we're going to scare you. And it did. Uh, you, you know, I was nine years old. They walked away. And I said, I don't think I want to be here. All right? But so I'm not real impressed with the monarchy. I, you know, I mean, you know, and I know some of you guys really like Prince William and Kate Middleton. But you want to know something? I could live with the fact that if they had jeans and a T-shirt and were commoners, I'd be 